I've got a word for you today. Uh, it's been bubbling in my heart this morning. I want to encourage you today. And we're going to jump in John chapter 14 this morning. John 14, verse 27. I'm actually going to read out the Amplified Version, give a little different perspective on it today. It might be a little different in your Bible here this morning. So let's stand if we could for, as we read the Word of God. John chapter 14, verse 27. If you are there, say amen. 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 It says this, I leave you peace, my peace I give, give you. I do not give it to you as the world does, so do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. Peace I leave with you, my perfect peace I give to you. Not as the world gives to you, do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. Let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance and give you courage and strength for every challenge. I'm going to stop there this morning. And Lord, I just thank you for your word today, God. I thank you, Father, for being our Prince of Peace today. I thank you for your peace, God. Um, I thank you for calming every fear in this place today, God. I thank you, God, for your peace just overwhelming us today in this place, Jesus. I thank you for, for your word. I thank you for people as they come in here maybe heavy-hearted. I think they're going to leave just renewed and refreshed and walking out with a greater sense of who you are in your spirit today, Jesus. So I thank you for an encounter with uh, your presence and your spirit today, Jesus, that we are forever changed by your spirit in the word today. So we, we thank you for the word in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Just out of curiosity this morning, how many of you could say you could use a little extra peace in your life? Just, just a little bit, like you've got some, but you know, you could use a little bit more, just, just a tad, you know. How many of you could say that I could use some, a little more peace in some area, some space in my life? I, I think we could all agree that a lot of us are looking for peace in some area of our life in some way. I think that's, that's all of us. We're trying to find peace in certain areas and different, different places. And you know, if we don't protect our peace, we will lose our peace. If we don't protect it, we will lose our peace. And a lot of times, if we don't learn to protect it, we'll, we'll lose it. And some of us today may have lost our peace as we come in here this morning. Some of us have lost our peace through relational tensions. Maybe through a mom or dad or brother or sister, or aunt or uncle. Maybe something relationally where you've lost your peace through that tension. Maybe some of us have lost our peace through financial tensions here this morning. Like the bills are stacking up. There's more going out than there is coming in. There's a tension there where we've lost our peace. Or maybe some of us have lost our peace through something physical that we're dealing with. And our peace has just gone out the window. It's just escaped us. Or maybe some of us have lost our peace out of something, some unknown event or future that we're concerned about. And that's really where I've been here recently. I've just been like, so concerned about America, I've lost my peace at times. I've been on the news way too much, and I've had to clock out, like, I've got to get recentered to get my peace back and know Jesus is on the throne. So that's where I've been here recently, just to be honest and transparent this morning. But I'm like, i got to get back centered because, Jesus, I can't lose my peace and all this because I know you're still on the throne. You're still God. Some of us have lost our peace this morning. And I think we can all agree we want peace today. There's thousands of book that, books that are sold every single year on people how to get a, a peace of mind. People are looking for it. I think we can all agree that we want peace this morning. And the good news is today is God wants you to experience his peace. His peace. He wants you to live in his peace, to know his peace, to experience it day in and day out. His peace is available for you here today. It is accessible. God wants you to know his peace, not a peace like the world gives, but a peace that he gives today. You know, sometimes when a relative passes away from this life to the next life, from this world to the next, oftentimes we, we say this word, like, now they're in peace. Like, now they have peace. It's almost conveying this idea that the only time you can find peace is when you die. And it's like, that's depressing. I don't know about you, but that's, that's not very encouraging. Like, okay, when I die, I'm really going to experience peace. But let me tell you today, the kingdom of God is here right now. It is tangible. His kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy, and the Holy Spirit. It is accessible here today. And I've got news for you today. Jesus said, right now, right this second, I'm leaving you my peace right now. You can have it right now. You don't have to wait to experience it when you die, but you can experience his peace here and right now. In fact, his peace works in a pandemic. His peace works through all adversity, all challenges, all struggles. In fact, his peace works best when you need it the most. Yeah. And listen to Jesus' words. My peace I leave with you. My perfect peace 
I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give it to you. Don't be afraid. Don't be troubled. But let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance and give you strength and courage for, for every challenge. So what I want to say today is that God's peace works in every circumstance. Every circumstance, God's peace works. It works. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're looking at, whatever you're dealing with, God's peace works in every circumstance. You may say, does it work in this? The answer is yes. It does work. Let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance. So my prayer is today, as you hear this word, that the peace of God, well, you would allow it to move in your heart, to calm every fear, and to strengthen your heart here this morning. Because God wants you to experience his peace this morning. You know, the Bible talks about, it teaches on two different kinds of pieces. Peace with God and the peace of God. Peace with God and peace of God. The peace with God has to deal with our relationship with God. Like, before Christ came, there was sin, there's a barrier, there's a separation that there was a wall that separates from God and we're actually, the Bible says, enemies of God, but Jesus came and broke down that wall, broke down that barrier so that we could be sons and daughters, no longer enemies, but friends, and he calls us sons and daughters. Romans chapter 5 says, therefore we have been justified by faith. We now have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It is the peace with God that has to do with our relationship with God. And we're justified by faith. We're no longer enemies. There's no longer a wall. There's no longer question, does he love me? Does he love me not? Is he for me? Is he for me not? I now have peace with him that he's made us the righteousness of God. That I'm a son and daughter. I'm no longer an enemy, but I'm a son. There's a peace with God. There's a peace of God that has to deal with our everyday experiences and everyday living that we deal with. And you can't have the peace of God till you first have peace with God. Do you have peace with God today? Do you have the peace of God today? It's an incredible thing to experience. There's nothing like it. It's nothing like the world can give when you have that kind of peace from God, knowing that, you know, I'm loved by him, knowing that I'm saved, knowing that no matter what I'm looking at life, I can have the peace of God. It's an incredible thing to experience. You know, let me ask you this. Have you ever used the expression, I'm going to sleep on it? Like, I'm going to sleep on it. Have you ever used that expression before? It's an expression that we use, like sometimes when we're facing a decision, we're looking at a decision we got to make, and we little, need a little more time to process that decision. We say, I'm going to sleep on it a little bit. To give us a little more time, oftentimes we're, we're led by peace, we're making a decision, and it gives us a little more time to process it. Sometimes it's wisdom to sleep on it, to not rush in it too quick so you can process on it, process on it pray on it, and, and think about it. Say, I'm going to sleep on it. You know, one of the products of peace is sleep, I believe. You know, God wants you to have a good night's rest, sleep. He wants you to rest. I do truly believe that, and, and sleep is a wonderful thing. I mean, does anybody love sleeping here this morning? I don't know about you, but I'm an anointed sleeper. Like, I can sleep, I can hit the pillow, and I can pass out real quick. When I, when I start putting on my PJs, I start feeling the glory of God. It's like, I feel the anointing. I'm like, and then when I lay in bed, I'm starting to raise a hallelujah. It's like, thank you, Jesus. Oh, man, I feel the glory right now. I'm an anointed sleeper. I believe one of the products of peace is sleep. God wants you to, to rest. But my question is, what, what do you do when you can't sleep? What do you do when you can't find rest? What do you do when you can't find peace? What do you do when you're staring at the clock at 2 o'clock in the morning? You're tossing and turning. Counting sheep isn't working. You're on sheep 500 and you still can't sleep. You're, you just have fear and turmoil on the inside of you and anxiety and worry. You cannot sleep. Has anybody ever been there? You know what I'm talking about this morning. Have you been there? I think a product of peace is, is sleep. And sleep or peace is precious. It's a precious thing to have your soul at rest, to have your mind at rest, to have your emotions at rest. It is a precious thing, especially if you've never experienced it before. You know, they say that Americans are going to spend about $50 billion on sleep aids this year. And that's like pre-pandemic that happened. I'm sure it's quadrupled since then. I'm sure it's doubled since then. $50 billion on sleep 
sleep aids, stuff like melatonin. Now, you parents in here, tell the true shame of the devil. You, you've probably never given your kids that at night. Like, here, kids, here's your, here's your vitamin. You're going to sleep real good tonight. <laughs> None of us have ever done that, I'm sure. <laughs> Stuff like melatonin, guava tea. They make, like, sound machines now where you have white noise and rain sounds and, and oceans to help you go to sleep. $50 billion a year spent on sleep aids to, to help you sleep. And I can say you appreciate peace a lot more when you have a season when you haven't had it, where it's escaped you, where you've, you've lost it. It's like, where did it go? I mean, I'm, I've had some moments in my life where, you know, I'm a pretty good sleeper. I can rest pretty well. But I have some moments where I've tossed and turned in my bed at night where peace has escaped me and, and I'm filled with fear and anxiety and worry. And, I, and it has escaped me in that moment. You learn to appreciate it more when you haven't had it and you've had it before. You wake up in the morning, it's like, thank you, God, I've had a good night rest and I've had your peace. And maybe some of you are like that here this morning. Maybe some of you today, that's me. I've, I've lost my peace. My mind is racing. I'm dealing with all these things. I've, I've, I can't rest. I can't sleep. Maybe that's you here this morning. You, your peace has escaped you. You've lost it. But listen to Jesus' words. My peace, I leave you. My perfect peace, I give you. Not as the world gives, do I give it to you. In other words, my, my peace is not like... Not like melatonin, it's not like guava tea, it's not like sound machines or white noise, but my peace is perfect. And when my peace comes into your life, it changes everything. Come on, man. It's nothing like the world. It changes everything in your life when he experiences perfect peace. You know, one thing I love about Jesus, not only did he tell us about peace, but he modeled us peace. He models us peace. I want to look at Matthew chapter 8, verse 23. Matthew chapter 8, verse 23, Jesus is modeling us something here. And Matthew chapter 8, verse 23, it says, Jesus got into a boat and his followers went with him. A great storm arose on the lake so that the waves covered the boat, but Jesus was sleeping. He was what? He was sleeping. And his followers went to him and wake, woke him saying, Lord, save us, we will drown. Jesus answered, why are you afraid? You don't have enough faith. Then Jesus got up and gave a command to the wind and the waves, and it began, became completely calm. Now here's Jesus and his disciples. They get in a boat in the Lake of Galilee, and the Lake of Galilee was like 600 feet below sea level. And what would happen? The hot air would rise, it would stir the winds, the cold air would come down, turn up the waters, and it, the place was notorious for storms. I mean, storms blew up all the time. And here they are, this little tiny boat that can only hold about 12 people they had no sails and here's Jesus he's sleeping in his one little spot here and all of a sudden they see the storm coming no doubt they they could see it they see it coming across the lake and someone says should we wake up Jesus now it's like nah just just let him sleep and they get in the middle of the storm finally and it gets a little rough and somebody else says should we wake him up I'm like nope just let him sleep and it gets pretty difficult in the moment, you might be able to hand it at first, handle it, but once you get into it, it's a little different story. And these guys were experienced fishermen. They knew what they were doing. Yeah. I mean, they've navigated a boat. They've been through storms before. They knew how to do this, but this storm was like no other storm they've ever experienced. It talked about the waves were crashing over the bow. It was crashing in the boat. They were getting ready to sink. This was like a storm like no other storm. But then you have Jesus. He's sleeping. He's probably getting wet. I mean, I've never been in that scenario before. The only thing I can compare it to is probably like the Raging Rapids at Holiday World. You know, anybody wrote that? It's like, how could you sleep on that thing? You're being tossed around, water's hitting you. It's like, and here's Jesus. He's perfectly asleep on the boat. It just sounds crazy. I just want to say today, you can be at rest in a storm this morning. Even though if you're in a storm, you can be at rest. Even though we're in a pandemic, you can have peace. Even though you have adversity, you can have rest this morning. You can have it today. Jesus, he was in the middle of a storm. But yet, the Bible says he still had rest. He models us something for us. Jesus was in the same predicament as everybody else, but yet Jesus responded differently than everybody else. In other words, the storm had a different effect on some people than it did on others. Because some were not feeling the same thing. They were panicking. They were afraid they're going to die. They were afraid we're going to go down. But then, here's Jesus. He's, he's sleeping. It's possible to have peace in a storm. It's possible to have rest in a storm. How do we know that? Because Jesus shows us that. He models that for us. 
And then they wake Jesus up. And Jesus asks a question. He's like, why are you so afraid? Why are you so afraid? That just seems like a crazy question to ask. It's like, Jesus, really? I mean, this, it's pretty obvious why we're afraid right here, right now. We're in the middle of this lake and this boat and there's lightning crashing all around us. There's rain beating down. We're about ready, getting ready to sink. Isn't it pretty obvious why we're afraid? And I think Jesus, the reason why he asks why is because he's trying to get them to understand that he's still on the boat. Now, I'm still here. Like... He's trying to make the point of, as long as I'm on the boat, this thing's not going to sink. As long as I'm not, I'm still on this thing, we're not going to go down. I know there's waves, I know there's adversity, I know all this stuff is happening. But as long as I'm on this thing, this thing is not going down. Why are you so afraid? And I think that's a question not just for the disciples, but that's a question for us. Why, why are you so afraid? Why, why are you so afraid? That's one of the questions we can ask ourselves. Why are we so afraid? Some of us are dealing with, with fears where... We're scared to death. We're dealing with anxiety. One of the questions you can ask yourself is, why am I so afraid? And Jesus, he answers his own question. Why are you so afraid? You you don't have enough faith. And I think the point that Jesus is making here is he's saying, you know what? You need to have your confidence in me, your faith in me in this. You're preoccupied with everything that's all around you, the waves, the lightning that's crashing and all the chaos that's around you, but you need to have your faith in me. Have, focus in on me. That's where you need to focus right yeah. now. Right. You know, the word afraid, it means timid or cowardly, if you look it up in the Greek. So it's really talking about a lack of courage or confidence. So what Jesus is speaking to the men on these boats, he's saying, hold on, guys, your confidence is not in me right now. Yeah. And I think what this year has shown us is shown us where people's confidence is. You know, some people's confidence is in themselves and their, their own ability and their own ability and their, their finances, their businesses, or whatever it may be. But I think the Lord has taught us this year that, you know, our, our only confidence should be in Jesus Christ alone. Yeah. Our confidence should only be in God. And Jesus' confidence was, was in God. That's how he could be at rest. You know, I can, I can be at rest because I know God is working. Yeah. Like, how can you be so filled with joy right now? Because I know God's working. How can you have peace right now? Because I know God's working. How can you just be so positive? Because I know God is working. I may not understand the timing of it, or I wish it would happen sooner than what it is, but I know God is faithful. I know his word is true, and I'm putting my faith and my confidence in him. Jesus was at rest and at peace in the middle of all this because his confidence was in God. Well, you say, of course, that's Jesus. He's God. Of course, he had peace. Right? Do we do that sometimes? He's Jesus. He's like God. Of course he had peace. But let me show you Peter. Let me give you an example here of Peter in Acts. I'm going to read the scripture to you. Acts chapter 12, verse 5. It says this about Peter. So Peter was kept in jail, but the church prayed earnestly to God for him. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. That sounds like a lot of fun. Bound with two chains. Other soldiers were guarding the door of the jail. So here's Peter. He's in prison. He's chained up between two other prisoners. And it says he's sleeping. I mean, in the chapter, in the beginning of this chapter, there's James, the brother of John. And it says that King Agrippa had cut off his head. And it said when he realized how it pleased the Jews, they arrested Peter also. So Peter knew what was coming down the pike. He knew what he was facing. He knew what he was looking at. I don't think it was ignorance, but I think it was confidence. It's like he's able to rest in that moment and sleep in that moment. I'm telling you right now, I would not be sleeping in that moment, especially between two other guys. And I'm sure it was a terrible environment. It was damp and there was sickness and all that stuff going on there. But here's Peter. He's, he's at rest. He's at peace, even though he's getting ready to face possibly dying. I would be all a mess in that moment. I, I like to say I have faith, but I don't know how I'd respond to that moment. But he's like at perfect peace in that moment. How is that possible? Because peace is an, an internal work. It's not an external one. It works from the inside out, not the outside in. It's an inside job. Some people think if they can get on that vacation or get away from all their problems or, or hit the beach and get away from all the chaos, then I can have peace in my life. 
But I'm telling you, even if you find the most remote locations, the most pristine beaches, the most beautiful locations, you can have all the money, you can have all the stuff, you can have all the right people in your life, everything you want, but still have an absence of peace, lasting peace, God's peace. You can have all of that and still not have peace. Because my peace is dependent upon nobody else except for Jesus. It's an inside job. And life's circumstances works dependent from God's peace. It's separate. Because a lot of times we think that we've got to get all our life circumstances perfect and all in order. Then I'll have peace. Where everything's got to get all smooth and worked out. Then, then I'll have peace. How is that working for you this morning? Last time I tried that, that wasn't very good. Because it's like, nothing's ever perfect. There's, there's always something in your life, that some circumstance. It never works out, though. It'll never be perfect. We wait for things to smooth out and be perfect. Then, then I'll have peace. It doesn't work great that way. But to say, no, I've got peace right now. I've got, I've got peace for days. I've got peace on standby. Because my peace doesn't come from people. It doesn't come from guava tea. It doesn't come from melatonin. It doesn't come from sound machines or white noise or all that stuff. But my peace is supplied by God. And it's a peace that the world cannot give me. It's an inside job. It's an internal work on the inside of us. I want to show you Daniel. Daniel is another guy that experienced peace. I want to read this out of Daniel chapter 6, verse 18. It says this, that talking about King Darius, it says this, Then the King Darius went back to his palace. He did not eat that night. He did not have any entertainment brought to him. I'm not sure what that means. We'll just skip over that. (laughs) And he could not sleep. He could not sleep. Here is King Darius. This guy, actually, if you understand this passage, he liked Daniel. But the king was tricked into making a decree that nobody could worship any other god except for himself. But Daniel kept worshiping God. And King Darius was bound to his word. So since he didn't follow, he had, to be, he had to follow his word. He had to throw him in the den of lions. He throws him in there. And if you see the difference, here's King Darius. He has all this money, power, prestige, anything he could possibly want. But this guy has no peace and he can't sleep. But then here's Daniel who's thrown in the lion's den and has nothing His face with all this stuff, he has peace. And it says that God shut the mouths of the lion. I can just envision him just sleeping on the lion's head, just just sleeping right there in in perfect peace. Two different guys. One doesn't have God. He has everything else, but he doesn't have peace. The other guy has his confidence is in God alone. And he's facing all this adversity, but here he still has perfect peace. I want a peace like that. I don't know about you. I want the peace of God in my life. How do you get that kind of peace? How do you get the peace like Jesus? You can be in the middle of a storm and be sleeping and have that kind of peace. How do you get a peace like Peter? It can be in the middle of jail and be, be bound. How can you have a peace like that? How can you have a peace like Daniel, be in the middle of the lion's den and have perfect peace like that? I, I want a peace in my life, the peace of God. I think we can have that. Philippians says this. Chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you'll experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. It says, Don't worry about anything. In other words, don't do this, but do this. Pray about everything. Tell God, what you need, and thank him for what he has done. And then you'll experience God's peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding, the peace that exceeds all that we can understand. This is the avenue towards the peace of God. When is the last time you prayed about it? When's the last time you told him about it? When is the last time you thanked him for what he's done? Because sometimes it's the last thing that we do. It sounds so simple, but it can be so complicated for us sometimes. Because we try to understand. We try to figure it out. We try to do it ourselves. But God's like, you know, pray about it. Tell me what you need and thank me for what I've done and my peace. Then then you'll experience my peace. Then you'll experience my peace. 
The word guard is, in the Greek is, is actually the word garrison. And it's talking about like a soldier being actively guarding your heart and mind. It gives this picture of like soldiers at like a fort. And when they see people coming, they close the doors and say, you can't come in. And just like the peace of God, it's actively guarding your heart and mind. It's protecting you. So when you have the peace of God, when anxiety comes knocking at your door, peace says, nope, you can't come in. Doors closed. This person's at peace right now. When fear comes knocking at your door, it says, nope, you can't come in. This person's at peace right now. When worry comes knocking at your door, it says, nope, you can't come in. This person, man and woman of God, is at, at peace right now. It's actively guarding your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. That's what happens when you, when you tell God what you need, when you, when you pray about it, when you thank Him for what He's done. Then you'll experience His peace, and then it'll guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. It's actively guarding you. So you can have that kind of peace when you're in a storm like Jesus. You can have that kind of peace like you, like Peter is in jail. You can have that kind of peace like Daniel is in the lion's den. It'll guard your heart. It can't invade you. That fear to calm your heart. That's how we have experienced the peace of God. Sounds real simple, but it can be so complicated for us at times. Just tell God what you need. Pray about it. Thank him for what he's done. And you'll experience a peace that surpasses all understanding. Can't understand it. Don't know where it came from. It's beyond our comprehension. Because it comes from God. It's not like a peace of this world that the world gives us. And for us to have the peace of God, we've got to remove our right to understand, I think. Sometimes we want to understand. Yeah. We can't have it until we remove our right to understand and trust him. So what Isaiah says, he keeps those in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on, on him. Trust him. Have confidence in him. Jesus' words were, my peace I I leave with you. My perfect peace I give you. Not like the world gives do I give it to you. So don't be afraid. Don't be troubled. But let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance and give you courage and strength for every challenge. You know, Jesus said, let it. Let it. That means we have a part to play. Let it. Let his perfect peace calm you. Well, I say, I want Jesus to do something amazing in my life. Well, he's already done it. It's done. Now it's up to us to receive it. It's accessible. Let it. Let his perfect peace calm you. That is our part. That is our responsibility to let the peace of God calm our hearts. I want to pray for us this morning. You might have came here today with... Maybe attention in your life. Maybe peace has escaped you this morning. Maybe rest has escaped you this morning. Maybe you've had turmoil on the inside with worry and fear. Things of this world right now. Things are kind of chaotic right now. But Jesus says you can have peace. My peace is available. Not a peace like the world gives, but a peace that only I give. I give you peace right this second, this very moment. You don't have to wait. It's available right now. And some of you today may have came in here today and it's escaped you. You've lost it. And God wants to, you to pick it back up. It's that simple. Just pick it back up. Right now, some of us right now, we need to just pray about it. Let's just do that. Pray. And tell him what we need and thank him for what he's done if that's you this morning he says I need God's peace I just want you to stand just as an act of faith God, God I'm receiving your peace let it let it this morning let it calm your heart today let it strengthen your heart today let his peace overwhelm you today let it calm every fear God says why are you so afraid why are you so afraid I'm here with you I'm on the boat with you You don't have to worry. You don't have to fear. Why are you so afraid? Take my peace. Receive my peace today. My peace is available. Not like the world gives, but only I give. Let my peace calm your heart this morning in every circumstance and give you strength and courage for every challenge today. So right now, God, we just receive your peace today. 
We receive your peace. Let it calm our hearts today. We receive the peace of God. I just, I just speak peace be still in people's minds and hearts this morning. Peace be still. I say worry and anxiety and fear leave right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for your peace overwhelming us right now. Your peace that surpasses all understanding right now. And it's going to guard our hearts and minds and you today, Jesus. Fear can't come back in. Anxiety can't come back in. Worry can't come back in. Thank you today, Jesus, for your peace. We receive it this morning, God. Thank you. Let's just thank him right now. Thank you, Jesus, for your peace. Thank you for your peace. Even with all the chaos in the world right now, we can have peace. Because you're with us and you're on the throne. We thank you for your peace, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We're going to live in your peace. Know your peace. Walk out in your peace. Get up Monday morning and still walking in your peace. We thank you for your peace protecting us, guarding us today. Thank you, Jesus, for your peace today. If there's anybody in here that says, you know what, I, I need peace with God. You want to give your heart to Jesus today and you don't have peace with God, you're not sure where you stand with him. Maybe you feel like your sin has separated you today and you need to say, you know what, I, I want the peace with God this morning. I just want you to raise your hand this morning if you want to give your heart to Jesus today. Amen. Well, Father, I thank you, Lord, for settling this in our hearts today. And we can walk in your perfect peace. And I just declare that over your people. We're going to walk in your peace, your perfect peace. We receive your peace today, not as the world gives, but as you give this morning, Jesus. Thank you, God, for your peace. Thank you for your people experiencing your peace, receiving your peace. Thank you that you are the Prince of Peace today, and you are present this morning. So I thank you for continuing to touch hearts as we leave this place. That we'll encounter your spirit even more as we leave this place continue to work in our hearts and our lives as we leave this place. Just thank you for your presence and for your peace this morning. We receive it today. We say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for it. In your mighty name. Amen and amen.